You're listening to a message from Gateway Church Geelong. We hope it blesses you. For more information about Gateway, visit gc.org.au. Well, welcome back. For joining us online today, it's great to have you with us. But if you're in the room, who's ready to hear the word of God today? I, um, you know, today's message comes from and is proudly sponsored by Proverbs 4. And um, I want to encourage you, this message may cut a little close today. But be encouraged, it will propel you into everything that God has for you, to the life that he's called you to live and fulfill. Who wants some of that? It's like maybe the propel and fulfill bit, but not the cut close bit. Amen. Um, you know, this, this scripture that I'm going to preach out of today is a scripture I've been focused on for over 20 years now, and it continues to be a beacon light for me and a reminder from God to guard my heart. And um, the primary scripture today is Proverbs 4. 23, some of you may be familiar with it, and it says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. It determines the course of your life. And in teaching on this today, I want to encourage you that out of this fresh reminder, God has a fresh encounter for you. Amen. Do you want to hear that one more time? Out of this message today. I want to encourage you to add to this fresh, in, fresh reminder that God has a fresh encounter for you. Amen. A fresh revelation, a moment for your heart to be softened, a baptism of sensitivity to God's heart. Amen. I want, I want to dispel some thoughts first and foremost around this passage of Scripture. Um, in some contexts, this Scripture has potentially been used as a weapon between people. Uh, the train of thought is that people have used uh, this scripture in guarding your heart. It ne- means you need to keep anyone who disagrees with you at arm's length. If you've done that with this scripture, can I encourage you? That is not the heart of this passage of scripture. What if in keeping people at arm's length, because you know you may disagree with them or you may have a different point of view or you may think that they're completely wrong. But, but what if they're right and you're wrong? In our bid to silence someone who disagrees with us, disagrees with our beliefs, it potentially robs us of truth. That's why we can't wield any scripture as a weapon, but particularly, particularly this one. So hear me clearly, there are, there are most definitely moments where we need to remove people from our lives. Has anyone had to remove someone from your life? It's, I, I understand that, but we shouldn't be wielding scriptures like, you disagree with me, therefore you're wrong, and I'm going to guard my heart from you because you're wrong. No, no, that, that's not the heart of it. So if you're a follower of Jesus who's tempted towards old practices or a follower of Jesus who is struggling to give up old practices, it would most certainly be wise not to embed yourself with people who are going to pull you deeper back into the old life. Makes complete sense, right? See, the struggle to eliminate potentially long-term sin, it's real. Struggling with language, drinking, smoking, drugs, bad relationship choices, Anger, violent outbursts, gossip, putting people down, whatever the challenge, being around people who are fluent and happy doing the very thing that you're trying to stop is going to end badly for you if you're always hanging around them. Speak from personal experience on that one. See, the Bible is is really clear about this. The Bible says not to walk in in the path of those who pursue evil. So Proverbs 4 Verse 14 to 15, don't do as the wicked do and don't follow the path of evil. Don't even think about it. Don't go that way. Turn away and keep moving. So the wisdom of God tells us to keep on moving. There is nothing to see here. Don't do as they do. Don't follow the path. Don't even think about it. Keep on moving. Amen. Amen. The Bible's really clear on it. So the scripture in Proverbs 4, however, is more about you and I taking the responsibility to guard our hearts. 
No one else can do it. I can't do it for you. You can't do it for your, for your friends and family. Only you can guard your heart. We can encourage people. We can use wisdom and encourage people with wisdom, but we cannot guard the heart of another. We can only guard our own heart. So what does it mean to guard your heart? Um, other versions of the Bible, which we'll get to in a second, but use words like keep vigilant over your heart and watch over your heart and keep thy heart with diligence. But I think what we need to understand is we need to, we need to understand the words. What, what does it mean to guard? Maybe, maybe some people just have this mentality of it's a big bouncer standing out the front of somewhere, like just looking really like huge. It's like, you can't come in. <laughs> is that what it means to guard? See, what it, the word guard means to protect to stand guard over, to watch over, to look after, to keep an eye on, to take care of, to cover, patrol, police, defend, shield, safeguard, preserve, save, keep safe, secure, screen, shelter, fortify, garrison, to barricade. See, we've been asked when we look at this passage of Scripture in Proverbs 4 verse 23, we've been asked by this Scripture to learn Learn to protect, learn to watch over, look after, keep an eye on, cover. We've been learned to, ask to learn to garrison our hearts, to keep safe our hearts. See, in guarding our heart, well, what is our heart? Maybe, like, maybe you've got this thought that a heart is just like this thing, this unspoken thing. And like every February 7th, like our hearts receive cards with hearts on them. Now, what is, that? What, is a, what is the heart? What is the heart? When we talk about biblically God's heart, what is, what is the heart? It's important to know how the Bible speaks about the heart. It's referring to in the Bible our, our inner person or our inner self where our thoughts are, where our emotions are, our conscience, our courage, our mind, our will, our understanding. That's what makes up all of our heart. And this is what God is asking us to learn how to guard. Our mind and our will and our emotions. The inner self. Asking us to keep watch over what, what is happening within ourselves. Keep watch over what is happening within our thoughts, within our emotions, within our minds. Taking it a step further, keeping guard over our minds and our thoughts and our emotions and even our ruminations. For those of us who, who maybe have those thoughts that just like every now and just keep, come, keep on coming back. Keeping watch over those things. In the message version, it says this in Proverbs 4.23. Keep vigilant watch over your heart. That's where life starts. See, I know that Christ has called all of us to have abundant life. Who believes that today? Yeah, I believe that Christ has called us to have abundant life. You know, that, that word vigilance or vigilant that in, in the message version, it's the, the action or state of keeping careful watch for possible danger or difficulties. Being on guard, being ready. For things, when things come and try and get into our minds or into our hearts. See, in keeping vigilant watch over your heart, what, what are you meant to be keeping a watchful eye on? So God's told me to keep guard over my heart, but what am I actually meant to be keeping my eye on? What am I meant to be watchful toward? So I know this to be true if, because of the Scriptures tell us, but we're called to make sure that sin and sick, sinful practice is guarded from becoming part of our mind, is guarded from becoming part of our heart and our emotions. The Bible says that when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Saviour, He makes us holy. Who believes that? You should because the Bible, the Bible actually says it. See, breaking news today, if you have Christ in your life, you have been chosen and made holy. That's what the Bible says about you. In 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 7, it says, God chose us to be holy. He does not want us to live in sin. He doesn't want sin to live in our, in our hearts, in our minds, in our emotions, in our, in our will, in our behaviour. 
See, God has called you to guard your heart from sin, but also guard the holiness that is in your heart. Amen. It's not just about keeping stuff out. It's about keeping the right things in the holiness that he's chosen you with to keep watch over your holiness, to protect your holiness. So what do we need to guard our hearts from? Well, for, for each of us, it could look a, bit, look a little bit different. There'll be similarities, but there could be different things that we need to be on watch for, amen? Different things that are a, they're a challenge for us. The one thing I know to be true, that we're called to guard our hearts with all diligence from what we so eagerly wish to make excuses for. Can I say that one more time? You don't, no, no, Pastor, don't say that one more time. We're called to guard our hearts with all diligence from what we so eagerly wish to make excuses for. Oh, it's not that bad. Someone so does it too. Oh, it's harmless. It doesn't hurt anyone. But does it? Perhaps it doesn't hurt anyone else yet because it's a secret and no one else knows. To know this, God has chosen you to be holy. You are chosen to be holy. But he also doesn't want your heart to entertain things that aren't meant to be there. Doesn't want your mind to entertain things that aren't meant to dwell there. You know, one of the things that I've, I've noted recently, and some of you may have noted this as well, that when I log into my various banking apps, that there's this pop-up that keeps coming up. And it's always along the lines of, be alert, be aware, scams are taking place. It's everywhere. Uh, and, you know, this week, uh, on Friday, I had a, or Thursday, I had a call from a bank. And um, believe it or not, they've called me, they've called me, and they've asked me for personal information to confirm who I am. And um, they called me. I want to encourage you that I'm alert. I... I've been told by them to be alert, to, to be aware that scams are taking place. And uh, I'm vigilant. I was ready. And uh, there was no way that I was going to get taken in by this person asking for my personal information. I had to be on guard to keep on guard to take care of my finances. And I'm, my response was, are you serious? You called me. I'm not telling you anything. Oh, 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 and I'm like, why are you out of Take me off the call list. Um, <laughs> see, God spoke to me personally a couple of months ago. It was clear. It was concise. It was loving. And his question to me was, how much longer will you continue to make excuses for the things that you allow in your life? It was loving. He, just the way that he sort of came to me, it, it was loving. And the follow-up question was, or well, the follow-up statement from him was, you will eventually become what you make excuses for. And I was like, Lord, well, I, don't, I don't want that. It's time to stop making excuses for the various, the various things. It was a call to guard my heart. It was a call to, to say, no, it's, it's not bad, but it's not good either. It was a call to be vigilant. It was a call to exercise diligence. It was a call to be more acquainted with holiness than excuses. Do you want me to say that one more time? It was a call to be acquainted with holiness more than excuses. See, my worst decisions have always been made when my heart is not sensitive to God. Is anyone familiar with? Yeah. My will was more awake to my own desires rather than sensitive to God's perfect will for my life. But my greatest decisions have always been when I'm listening and looking to God's Word. He's always made the path straight and clear when I've been guarding my heart from outside influence or my inside desires. See, this is the call for all of us to be more acquainted with holiness than excuses. So the question for you today is, what's your outside influence? What's the, what's the outside, outside influence that God's calling you to be on guard for, to be vigilant, to give all due diligence, to look after yourself? What's the desire of your soul that doesn't line up with God's holiness for your life? That's what you've been called to guard your heart against. 
you know, a number year, a number of years ago, I I heard uh, a message on guarding your heart, and it was shared like this by a fellow fellow pastor. And feel free to write this down because it it will it will grip your heart today. Today's complacency is tomorrow's captivity. We are what we tolerate. Today's complacency is tomorrow's captivity. We are what we tolerate. We're called to guard our hearts. Amen. Who wants to hear something that's going to lift their spirit this morning? Amen. And out of Proverbs 4.23, when we, God calls us to guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. When, you, when we guard our heart well, above all other things, above all other seductions, above all other fads, above all other desires of self, above all else, when we guard our hearts, our life course is determined. So that's the promise in that passage of Scripture. Our life course is determined. What God has determined is the best for us, His perfect will, His perfect direction. God wants to release that. It's where life starts. Amen. What's God's purpose for your life? What's God's course for your life? Spoiler, it's found in God's Word. Amen. It's found in God's Word. I just want to do a bit of a zoom out on Proverbs 4 for a moment. And we're going to start reading from Proverbs 4 verses 20. This is what it says. My child. I just want you to like listen to this. My child. So God identifies you as his child, amen? My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep in your heart. For they, talking about his words, bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. Look straight ahead. Fix your eyes on what lies before you. Make out a straight path for your feet. Stay on a safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. What's the course that God has determined for you? It's found here in the Scriptures. Listen, pay it. Pay careful attention to words. Don't lose sight of my words. Let them penetrate deep in your heart. In the, the message version, it, sa- it says this. Keep your eyes straight ahead. Ignore all sideshow distractions. Ignore all sideshow distractions. There are so many sideshow things happening. In the world right now, there are so many sideshow things happening in our lives right now. And I want to encourage you, ignore all the sideshow distractions. You want, to, you want God's determined course for your life? Guard your heart and look straight ahead. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Those things are only going to take you to a place that was never determined for your life. Amen. See, when this passage a Proverbs 4, what it says about you is God is saying, listen to this. He's actually speaking directly. Listen to this. God sees you as his child. He wants his truth to deeply penetrate your heart. His words bring life. His words bring healing. He gives us the keys to make sure that we step into the life that he has for us. How do we do it? By avoiding all and any perverse and corrupt speech, careless banter, lies, gossip. And he promises that when you do this, when you guard your heart from those things, that there is a straight path set before you. See, what are the sideshow distractions that might stop stop you from the course that your life is meant to be on? Don't put your hand up. Don't yell it out. Like, just just in, internalise it. <laughs> What are the sideshow distractions that at the moment you kind of like, and maybe you're doing these ones, maybe you're kind of like, I, I, I'm not turning my head to the right, but I'm exercising my eyes to, no, no, I'm looking straight, Lord. 
Oh, oh. Would you, oh. Look straight, oh. What are the things that may be distracting you, tempting you to do the side eye, to look at things, to head to a path that you're not called to be on? I love that Ezekiel prophesied it like this, verse 36, 27 and 28. I'm going to give you a new heart and I'm going to give you a new spirit from all your deepest parts. I'll remove the rock hard heart of yours and I'll replace it with one that is sensitive to me. I'll place my spirit in you, empowering you to live accordingly to my regulations and keep my just decrees. This is the renewal that Jesus gives to every single heart who calls upon his name. Amen. A new heart, a new mind, a sensitive heart that empowers you for God's purpose. And I I speak this over all of us today. You are empowered. You receive Christ, you've called upon his name. He's given you a new heart. He's exchanged your old hard heart for a new soft heart, a sensitive heart, and he has empowered you with his spirit. You are empowered. And I know there's moments when we don't feel like we are like empowered. Maybe you're feeling right now like you're not empowered. But the word of God says that you have been empowered by his spirit, amen? The Word of God says that you have been empowered by His Spirit. Amen. I'm going to keep on saying it. The Word of God says that you have been empowered by His Spirit. You are empowered. You are empowered. You are empowered. You have a sensitive heart. It's been placed there by God Himself. I'm going to keep saying it until you stop arguing back in your own head. Oh, but pastor, or if you only, you are empowered. Your circumstances are not above the Word of God. They're real, but they're not above the Word of God. The challenge is real, but it's not above the Word of God. So you're empowered. It's time to set your mind on higher things, to guard your heart and cultivate heavenly things for your life. Colossians 3 verses 1 to 3 says this, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Set your minds, set your heart, set your heart on things above. The place where we process things, the place where we feel things. Set our minds and our hearts on things above. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Your old life is no longer in control of you. It's time to set your mind on things above, heavenly things. You're being called and chosen to live in God's holiness. Amen. <clears throat> Ephesians 4, 29, 31 says this. This is an encouragement of of how we need to guard our heart and the things we need to guard our hearts from. Ephesians 4 verse 29 to 31. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may be a benefit to those who listen. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave you. Amen. This is how our minds and our hearts are called to act. We need to get rid of all of those things. We need to be a blessing and a benefit and build up people around us. We need to get rid of anything that exalts itself over Christ. And we need to be kind and compassionate. Who needs some kindness and compassion in their world? The truth is every human on planet Earth needs God's kindness and compassion. Every single one of us could do with a dose of kindness and compassion. Amen. Imagine if it came from the person who's sitting next to you today. Imagine if you were able to give kindness and compassion to the person next to you today. Well, 
I love the, after the comma, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave you. Sometimes it can be hard to, to be kind and compassionate to people that you've had run-ins with because they took your park. Sitting in my chair, they might, I don't even know if they're Christians anymore. Now we, we need to exercise forgiving one another. Everyone, everyone has a bad day every now and then. And some people have more than, more than good ones, but forgiving one another, it, it makes it possible for kindness and compassion to exude from your heart. If you're carrying things in your heart that are keeping your heart bound, kindness and compassion it may feel a little bit forced. It may feel fake because you're carrying things that are ruminating in your heart over and over. The Lord wants to meet you today. The Lord wants to help you to work through those things. The Lord wants you to get rid of all of those things out of your heart, as it says in verse 31. Folks, you are called to build up people in your world. You're called to be a benefit to people around you. You've been redeemed in Christ. And it says to do this in verse 29 and 31. It encourages you to get rid of any unwholesomeness, any bitterness, any rage, anger, brawling, slander and malice. You know, for those of you who aren't well versed in words, like I'm not always well versed in words, malice is things like gossip and nastiness. You know, gossip is listening or sharing at the expense of the misfortune or misrepresentation of others. If there's one thing that I know about our world right now, sharing at the expense or misfortune or misrepresentation of others, it seems to be what counts for news these days. It seems to be what counts for entertainment pages these days. It seems to be what counts for social media posts these days. It's just everyone just like nastiness and malice and prod, prod, poke, poke. Did you hear about so-and-so? Yeah. I want to I encourage you. God's called us to get rid of, to separate ourselves from that behaviour because we need to guard those things from our hearts. If we want to step into the life determined for us by God, we need to guard our hearts from those things. Amen. See, when we guard our heart well, we're not stopping everything from coming in. We're going out of our way to bag check every moment, every word, every influence, every treasure that comes to our gate. And we're not only letting through good treasure that is going to benefit our heart. Any bad treasure that comes, we're like, mm -mm, you, you don't belong here. This place is a holy place. I've been chosen to be holy. How about you say it to yourself right now? I've been chosen to be holy. Oh, I need a couple more people to say it. Say it. I have been chosen to be holy. That's right. You have been chosen to be holy. So we're only letting through the good treasure. It's going to benefit our heart because we want the life that God is destined for. We reject pride and instead we, re we choose the real life. Luke 6.45, for those of you who are familiar with this, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart... The mouth speaks. I want, I want to encourage you that you are called to have an abundance of good treasure in your heart and everything else you're called to get rid of. It cannot be your friend anymore. We're called to get rid of anything that exalts itself over the holiness that dwells in us. Our overflow, our abundance is called to be good treasure that fills our hearts. The Word of God, His kindness, His mercy, His joy, His peace, His compassion, His kindness, and amen. I want to encourage you. you know, there's nothing worse. You may have seen this before. 
I've seen it in real life, not just in movies. There's nothing worse. And you walk past a building and it's like a guard either on their phone or having a nap. That's even worse, right? It's like, I could like just come in and do stuff. Like I wouldn't because God's made me holy, but, but I could just do whatever I want right now. You wouldn't even know because you're like either looking at your phone or you're having a nap. Just like dreaming dreams of the great visions that God's called him to. But I want to encourage each and every single one, each and every single one of us, your ability to stay awake in the middle of a cultural epidemic that is wooing our hearts to medicate ourselves to sleep, to slumber. We, we are in the middle of an epidemic and your ability to stay awake, to stay on guard. See, if you can stay awake and stay on guard in the middle of an epidemic that woos your heart to medicate itself, you're going to stay on the path determined. Not the path you've determined, but the path that the Lord has determined for you. It's time for us to stay awake. When ideologies come across our screen, are you going to look at it? Or are you going to unfollow it? Are you going to partake of it? Or are you going to reject it? Your ability to stay awake. When your heart's saying, medicate me, medicate me, it's too hard. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up, amen. Don't take anything that's forced through your phone screen anymore. See, you have the power and the ability to gatekeep your heart from the seduction of sin. The Scriptures told me this morning that you've been given power. You've been empowered. You have the power and ability to gatekeep your mind, your heart, your emotions. You have the power and ability to gatekeep your heart from its own desires. See, the heart, our heart, our mind, it, it dictates what our mind thinks about on a regular basis. If we're consistently looking at things, consistently partaking of things, our heart just, oh, that's good, that's good, that's good. See, that can either be good thoughts, good paths, or it can be things that were never meant to be on your agenda. My encouragement for us today is this. Let's be people whose hearts are dictated by the words of God. Let's be people who listen and don't lose sight of God's words. Let's be people who allow His words to penetrate our hearts deeply. Let's be people who live without excuses. Let's be people who guard our hearts. Amen. Because I know that His Word brings life. The Word the Word of God brings life. Jesus brings life. Just as we come to the end of the service this morning, why don't we close our eyes for a moment? Holy Spirit, for each and every single person represented here today, Father God. God, I just pray for a moment of fresh encounter fresh encounter in their hearts, fresh encounter on their minds. Their spirit is open and receptive to the, to the Spirit of God moving right now. God, I pray for any person who's, who's carrying things that they're not meant to carry. There are things that need to be gotten rid of as the Scripture alluded to this morning. Holy Spirit, even as their hearts are before you right now and they're, they're like, yes, that, that's me. I, I just want to encourage you today just to begin verbalising those things to God and say, God, I need to get rid of this, 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 this. It cannot be in my heart and my mind and my will and my emotions and my relationship anymore. I need freedom from it. I need to be set free from it. Baptize me with a sensitive, fresh heart to you, Father God. 
I step into your empowerment. You've empowered me to, and given me the ability to, to guard my heart. I want all that you've determined for my life, Father God. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm believing this one, even in this moment. Don't let this moment slip by. This, this moment for many people in this, this room today is this. You're about to be set free. Your heart and your mind is about to be set free. Your emotions are about to be set free. Your emotions have been bound up and cut off and disconnected. They're about to be reconnected with a fresh sensitivity this morning. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, let it overflow. Let it overflow. Let it overflow into hearts this morning, Father God. Freedom, freedom in Jesus' powerful Name. Holy Spirit, Jesus, let Your kingdom come right now. Let Your will be done right now, Father God. Let heaven come to earth in Jesus' powerful Name. Holy Spirit, just, just with our eyes closed for a moment this morning. Now, if you're in this place or you're watching online today and you don't know Jesus personally, this is the pathway. You need to have something in your heart to guard. You need the holiness of Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus personally, this is the pathway to know God personally, to be forgiven of your sin, to surrender your life and call on the name of Jesus and follow Him. That's why God sent Jesus, why He went to the cross, He's buried and rose again for the forgiveness of our sin. So this is your moment today, just with every eye closed. If you're online today, this is for you as well. If you don't know Jesus personally, can, can I just invite you today to respond to that and say, yeah, I, I want a relationship with God. If that's you, can I just invite you to put your hand up? Once you put your hand up, you can put it back down. Does so anyone say, yes, that's me. I, I want a relationship with Jesus. I want to I wanna know God personally. I want to be known as a son, a daughter of God. Holy Spirit. Just with the eyes closed for a moment still, this, uh, I want to invite everybody to pray a prayer with me, but particularly if you don't know Jesus or you've been off on your own journey and you need to get your heart back with God. If you're online, I'm going to invite you to pray this prayer with us as well. Church, why don't, why don't we pray this prayer? Dear God, I thank you that you sent Jesus, that he went to the cross, he was buried, and he rose again on the third day for the forgiveness of my sin. I surrender my life to you. From this day on, I choose to follow you. In Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that that message was a blessing to you. If you made a decision to follow Jesus, first of all, congratulations. We think that that is incredible. And secondly, if you go to gc.org.au forward slash first steps, our team has put together some resources as well as there's some information there for how you can get in contact with one of our pastors because we'd love to encourage you and connect you into the life of the church.